We are back today with a video telling you everything you need to know about the food aboard Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady. From every restaurant to every food station in the galley to every snack, we're gonna go through it all. There are more than 20 eateries on board the ship, all included in the price of a cruise and created by a Michelin starred chef collective. So before we get into the video, I just wanted to mention that I am a travel agent and if you are interested in sailing with Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady or any of their upcoming ships, I'd be more than happy to help you with that. My contact information is down below and it is completely free to work with me. So if you have any questions, be sure to reach out. Let's get into the video. The first thing you need to know about the food aboard a Virgin Voyages ship is that it's very different from your typical cruise line. Virgin Voyages set out to really disrupt the cruise industry and to do things differently and to do things in their own way. Mm -hmm. So what you're gonna find on board one of their ships is that there's no main dining room, there's no specialty dining, but there are six main restaurants that are kind of like the focus of your dining experience on board. We had the chance to eat at four of those and just overall for the food aboard the ship, everything we had was pretty great. Mm -hmm. I mean, few things we like more than others, but overall no general complaints aboard the food. I think it's definitely one of the highlights aboard the ship. So the first restaurant we're gonna talk about is Extra Virgin. And if you can't tell, all of these restaurants kind of have like a punny name to it. This restaurant is Elevated Italian and it is open for dinner. Reservations are required for this and the other five main restaurants on board the ship, so that's good to know in, in planning for your vacation. One unique thing about this restaurant was that um, they had a very extensive wine list, which was great, and you could actually order the wine in a three ounce, five ounce serving or by the bottle. So it was nice that you had some options there and you could try yeah. you know, a couple of three ounces of different wines to kind of get a variety. But for our meal, you know, we started with bread service. We had three appetizers, the meatballs, mm -hmm. the- um, Beef carpaccio. Beef carpaccio, and then we had a charcuterie board. For our main dish, we had the Bucatini Carbonara. We knew we wanted to try one of their six fresh pasta dishes. And lastly, we had the affogato bar, which was created table side, and you got to select your gelato and your toppings. Of course, they had espresso on top. And the last thing you need to know about this restaurant and, and all the restaurants for that matter is that, as Andy mentioned, the restaurants are included in the cost of the cruise. But at each of the restaurants, they had something that you could pay an upcharge for. Mm -hmm. So at Extra Virgin, you could pay $15 and have fresh truffles added to any of your dishes. We never paid for any of the extras, thought the food was great without you know needing those upcharges, but just so that you know that it is an option. The second main restaurant on board Scarlet Lady is Pink Agave, which is their Mexican restaurant. It is open for dinner, and then you could get drinks at their Mezcal bar. Really well designed restaurant, big space actually. Mm -hmm. um, we ate there the first night of our cruise, so if you wanna see uh, the meal in detail, you can go check out our day one uh, Virgin Voyages vlog from our trip. Um, but I love the food there, everything was great. So a quick overview of what we got at Pink Agave. To start, we both got margaritas because obviously you, <laughs> that's your should be your drink of choice in a Mexican restaurant. Yep. Um, and then we got a bunch of appetizers. It was actually kind of weird. Like they only put like six <laughs> chips in each order of guacamole. Can I just say that before the trip, Andy, we had seen pictures coming out of the restaurant because <laughs> they had had a few weeks of sailings. Andy was so concerned because he's a big... <laughs> chips and guac person he saw pictures He's like where's the chips am i gonna be able to ask for extra he was so concerned like about the you chips. need to have the good chips to dip ratio right like let me know in the yeah. comments like but what did you think because it actually well, i i didn't I, run out of chips i didn't either but i think because it was also in the context of all the other food that we were having at the time yeah that any of the guac that was left over was just like aside for some of the other dishes we also got the esquites, um, which is uh, it's grilled street corn with a spicy aioli. Um, then we got some medium plates. Uh, for the medium plates, we got some enchiladas, uh, some papas con chorizo. 
And then for the large plate, we shared a ribeye steak uh, with some cheese and, mm-hmm. some, uh, and some chili on it. And that's kind of how the restaurant is uh, set up. So it's, it's a little tapas style with small, medium, and large plates. But it worked really well for kind of the pacing of the meal. The, the crew did a great job of bringing everything out and not rushing us um, through the experience. Right. And last but not least, we got the chocolate tacos and the bread pudding for dessert. And surprise, surprise, it was really good. Next up, we have Razzle Dazzle. This place is actually a veggie forward restaurant. It's actually the signature restaurant on board the ship. We knew we had to try it because everyone really hyped this place up and I actually think it delivered. Good to know that it isn't 100% vegetarian. They do have a naughty menu, they call it, (laughs) that, you know, he ordered off of. (laughs) Well, neither of us are vegetarians, but, you know, I... I prefer a little bit more of a substantial meal and, and a vegetarian meal. Right. Normally doesn't do that for me. Like I'll usually always get chicken or some sort of protein on a salad or right. something like that. So it was nice that you had the option to yeah. order those kind of items. But uh, let's talk a little bit more about what we got. Before we get into the food specifics, Bailey's joining us for the rest of the video. So This restaurant is actually open for breakfast, brunch, lunch, and dinner. Mm-hmm. They normally are going to have a drag brunch that was not an offering when we sailed with them because it was you know their inaugural first couple of sailings that wasn't an option at the moment but it is going to be happening at at razzle dazzle we ate there for breakfast one day and we had dinner one night Mm -hmm. for breakfast i loved how like Instagrammable everything was in this place. Well, everything on board the ship. Well, yeah, but yeah. the food, especially at the breakfast, I remember. So they had like beautiful avocado toast. Mm-hmm. They had fairy toast, which had yeah. like those rainbow sprinkles. They had an assortment of bakery items that you could start with. He got an impossible breakfast sandwich for breakfast. I got the razzle dazzle breakfast, which was kind of a little bit of everything. At breakfast, we did order one thing off the naughty menu, and that was the smoked bacon. That was really good. It was good, yeah. (laughs) That was good. Um, And you can pay $25 at brunch to make it a bottomless brunch. We did not do that, but good to plan ahead and know that that is an option. Dinner at Razzle Dazzle. I actually went with one of their veggie meals, which was heirloom squash ravioli. Andy got something off the naughty menu. He got the fried chicken. We tried Mimolet cheese tots, we got fries, but the real standout was the desserts and we got three of them. We figured didn't get any appetizers, so we can go all out on the desserts. So we got the milk and cookies. It came with three different types of cookies and it came with cereal milk. Mm -hmm. So we got one that tasted like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. We did the Razzle Cake, which was a chocolate mousse and toffee crunch cake. And then we got the rainbow churros, which came with a strawberry caramel sauce and ube ice cream. I had never had ube anything before. (laughs) (laughs) So it was nice to try that, but like the desserts just like blew us away. They were so beautiful and so delicious. The next main restaurant on board Scarlet Lady is The Wake. It is all the way in the back of the ship and it's aptly named because when you sit there, (laughs) you can see the wake of the ship. Probably one of the more elegant venues on board. You actually, it's a two-story venue. You enter on the second floor and you go down this big spiral staircase with a grand piano at the bottom to actually the, 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 the deck where you dine on. We had brunch and dinner there. For brunch, we were actually in Port in Nassau, so we didn't get the views, but we had dinner on our last night uh, while the ship was at sea and we got the great views um, of the wake. So for brunch, we both started off with some coffee and some fresh orange juice and some water. Got to stay hydrated in a variety of ways. (laughs) Um, We also got some pastries. And then for the main meals, we got steak and eggs, brioche French toast, avocado benedict, and then the wake benedict. So just a couple varieties of eggs benedict. And good to know you can also, same thing at Razzle Dazzle, upgrade, pay the $25 to make it a bottomless brunch if you want mimosas or wine or a selection of beers. So for dinner, it is a more formal steakhouse, so the menu definitely reflects that. To start, we both had 
the wedge salad, and then for our main entree, we got the filet mignon, and then some assorted sides came with that. We got some asparagus, french fries, rice baked potatoes, caramelized onions, and then for dessert, we actually weren't going to get dessert because we were stuffed, um, but our server was gr great, and she recommended the coconut panna cotta with fresh berries, so that was um, a I'm nice... so glad she talked us into that because that ended up being one of my favorite desserts that we had. Yeah, it was a nice way to kind of cap off um, cap off the meal. So like some of the other restaurants on board for dinner, the wake has some upcharges that you could add onto your meal. Uh, the first upcharge is an aged tomahawk steak for $65. And then you could get two different platters from the raw bar. A small platter for $40 and then the grand plateau, they call it, for $70. So that's gonna include lobster, crawfish, shrimp, clams, mussels, all the seafood that you would look to get. So the next restaurant is actually one that we did not get to try, but it is called the Test Kitchen. It is what they describe as an experimental onboard eatery. It is open for dinner and they offer a laboratory-like setting that does a six course menu. You could do the regular one or you could do a vegetarian version. And so what's kind of unique about this restaurant is that the courses are presented as like a one ingredient, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So for example, the regular menu is kind of like course one mushroom, course two egg, scallops, venison, blue cheese, chocolate. Yeah. Like so it's very... It's experimental, like we said. Yeah. So to give you an idea, like I have saw videos online, like we didn't eat there, but I saw videos online that the mushroom, it's like a pate in the shape of a mushroom. So exactly. like that's kind of what we're talking about. So this is like an experience for foodies. Yeah. We did have an opportunity to go inside the restaurant for a mixology class on our last day at sea. So it was nice to go and experience the space. And the last main restaurant on this list aboard Scarlet Lady is Gun Bay, which is the Korean barbecue restaurant. I've never had Korean barbecue. I don't know how, but it's kind of on the list. Of I did li once. List to try. <laughs> and we just wanted to prioritize some of the other restaurants on the ship, so we didn't get to do it, unfortunately. But we walked through the space. It's right adjacent to the galley uh, on one of the top decks of the ship. And it's your typical Korean barbecue setup. So you have the different tables around the restaurant with the, the actual grill in the middle. Um, so it's kind of like that family style cuisine. Everything that you would expect from a Korean barbecue restaurant, they had. So you could get your selection of meats and then you add your, your veggies to it. And then that's kind of how you build your dish and I also heard that they play like drinking games because yeah. this is a restaurant where you could be seated with other parties mm -hmm. because you know the tables surround the grill I heard it, it it's a very fun atmosphere so I, I really wish we could have checked it out so some of the favorites that we've heard from the restaurant are crispy chicken the short ribs and they also have a black sesame soft serve ice cream. Um, so that's just a variety of things you could get at Gun Bay. And for $45, you could upgrade to the Wagyu beef when you're at this restaurant. And just to reiterate, for those six restaurants, dining reservations are required. When we sailed, it was you could book your dinner reservations 15 days prior to your sailing. And then once you are on board, you could then book those restaurants for breakfast, brunch, and lunch. So you could only book dinner in advance, so just keep that in mind. The next dining option on board Scarlet Lady is the galley. The galley is Virgin Voyage's version of a buffet that you would normally find on a on a cruise ship. But like we said, they are doing things differently, so it's more of a food hall style. And so it includes 10 different venues with different types of cuisines that you would look to get. So you go into the space, you find a table, you sit down, you scan a QR code to get access to the menus. And it's actually like table service style. So somebody will come over and take your order and then bring you your food. So it's a little like hybrid between food hall buffet and sit down restaurant. So it's actually kind of nice that you get waited on in that space. Mm -hmm. And you could order things from multiple stations. We've done that. I'm like, I want the salad from over here. Bring me a fries from this place and yeah. you know, this. And there were a couple that were self-serve. So you can get up and get your own beverages and you can get up and get your own dessert. Mm -hmm. You know, it's some self-serve and some waiter service. Right. Between the two of us and our five day cruise, we tried every <laughs> single station. 
Here's a quick look at the 10 eateries in the galley. The first station is Diner and Dash, which is a 24 hour American diner serving breakfast all day. Next is the Burger Bar, serving classic cheeseburgers, impossible burgers, and fries. Let's taco about it, serving tacos and burritos. Hot off the press, serving sandwiches and paninis. Noodle around, serving ramen. The Daily Mix, featuring soups and salads. Bento Baby, featuring sushi. Well Bread, featuring fresh bread, pastries, and flatbreads. The Sweet Side, for all of your dessert needs. Quickies, for grab and go selections and Popstar with frozen popsicles. Also in the galley, you had a variety of hot and cold beverage stations. You had Tap That Hot for hot coffees and teas, Tap That Cold for soda, juices, and water, Tap That Hard for beer and wine. Of course, you have to pay for that, but you could do so with the ship's band. And the Grounds Club 2, which is a coffee station for purchase featuring macchiatos, flat whites, and lattes. There are some other food options on board the ship in addition to the main restaurants in the galley. The first one is a pizza place, which is actually some of the... Not, I can't say the best pizza I've ever no, had. We lived in New York. <laughs> best on a cruise ship, best on vacation. From, the three, cru from yeah. the three cruises I've been on, definitely the best on a cruise ship. And that venue is called the Pizza Place. Next up, we have the Social Club Diner, which basically is a... 50s style American diner. That was the perfect way of saying it. It is next to the arcade and also where they have some like late night karaoke. So it's a fun place to get. They had like pretzels, hot dogs, they had candy, popcorn, mm -hmm. spiked milkshakes, a really fun variety of snacks. Next up, we have Lick Me Till Ice Cream, which is a scoop shop. And it is very unusual for an ice cream parlor to be free in, in a cruise fair. Yeah. Usually that's something you would pay extra for. Totally complimentary here. And it was definitely on the whimsical side. The flavors from a choice of red velvet, vanilla, or salted blue corn cones and they had unique ice cream flavors like brown butter, malted strawberry milkshake, and key lime pie. And that was typically open from like 11.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then you had the Dock House and the Dock. Both are kind of your Mediterranean style venues. The Dock House is indoors and the Dock is outdoors, actually directly above the wake on the back of the ship. They do have some light food offerings, like Jenna got some goat cheese polenta at the Dock House, so it's just, just some really small dishes if you're looking for something quick while you're on board. Next, you have the Sun Club Cafe. It is an outdoor venue serving Hawaiian poke bowls, which was really unique, and this was typically open from noon to 5 p.m., so a great spot to get some lunch while you're out at sea. A place that we frequented a lot on board the ship was the Grounds Club. It's the main coffee bar on board. So they have some light pastries and snacks there, but you could also get your um, espresso beverages. They had some really good cold brew at this spot. So that is your go-to venue for any coffee while you're on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Andy went there at least once a day for a cold brew. I loved the cappuccino that I had. And everything is very well priced at the Grounds Club. I think Andy's cold brew was like $6. My cappuccino was usually around there. All of the specialty coffees will be an upcharge, but very well priced. And the last component of food on board Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady is room service. It's available 24 seven. It's a $5 delivery fee and you can get alcohol delivered to your room, which is great. If you wanna see one of the rooms on board Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady or learn more about what's included in the cost of a cruise, we have videos on that. Plus we have vlogs from our trip. We will put a link below to all of our videos if you're interested in watching more. But thank you guys for watching this video. That's gonna be it for us today. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media at A Couple Travelers. And until next time, keep traveling.